Ingenue yeah. Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. I'm here at Camrich Showroom and we are here talking with Marshall about his film Make Like a Dog. Let's look. You don't even have a picture of me in your wallet, Stanley. What'd you say, Elvira? I wish you wanted a picture of me in your wallet. No, just before. Well, you treat me like a dog and that's a fact. Yeah, that's a great idea. What is? The idea you just came up with. We'll work up a routine where you're the dog and I'm your master. You actually expect me to get on the floor and- Make like, like a dog. You yes. must be out of your mind. All right, Marshall, tell me a little bit about your film. Uh, well, it's set in the 60s about a married couple who are struggling with infertility in a very quirky manner. Which I think, you know, sometimes you find opposites and then sometimes like finds like and you find that quirk. Yeah, I think that uh, for me it was, when I thought about what I wanted to explore in film, uh, I've been married for 10 years. I got married Congratulations. young. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I happened to love marriage. I was obsessed with The Princess Bride when I was younger. So I'm like, a die-hard romantic and that translated really well for me into marriage so when looking at sort of as a as a film lover there was this shortage where it was like I love art house films mm -hmm. I love rom-coms mm -hmm. but like where's the art house film and the rom-com that combine you mm -hmm. know because I love the romanticism of a rom-com but it's let's be honest it's a little bit saccharine you have to sort of accept that yes. it's not real it's not gonna really happen like that in your life right yes you know, it might make you cry, which is great, and you love it. You go in wanting to feel that experience. But then in our house films, if it's ever about a married couple, it's it's going to be dour. Kitchen drama. It's going to be, there's going to be a murder. There's yes. going to be infidelity. There's going to be all these things that, even though those happen, it just never really makes you feel like, man, I'm so excited about being married. Absolutely. So I was, my mission was sort of set out and make content that comes from, like, sort of a hopeful viewpoint of yeah of marriage and it's like I would love a married couple to sit down and watch it and go like wow these these people are really messed up you and tend to learn a different side of someone when they're like they become the other half of you I imagine yeah I mean not to pontificate about the depth <laughs> of marriage but it's a full-on experience and I love it warts and all it's the most challenging thing but I find it to be very rewarding absolutely speaking of challenges what were some of the challenges that you came up upon in the writing or directing oh, funding anything any of that process yeah well I mean there was like this a couple small things like learning how to write uh, <laughs> and then like learning how to direct sure um, so I did all that this film sort of like walked me through film school and I did it in my spare time I make a living as an actor so mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a ton of time to do it, so it would be like, oh, I have a month here to work on it. And, um, we found it from a one act that was written in the 60s, and it took me a while to adapt it. Originally, I had written it where I only used the, the original author's words and just try to trim it down, because it was, I think, translated to screenplay format. It was, it was 20, 25 pages long. Okay. And so we ultimately shot with 11 and a half pages and then we even cut another minute off in post-production yeah wow so that was one of the major difficulties was like how do you truncate this like really deep story uh you know these characters with you know rich history in just such a short amount of time all right so from a production aspect what were some of the really what are some of the memorable moments for you uh, well okay when we got to this amazing location the person in charge of running it was like, hey, by the way, we just want to let you know the house is haunted. And we were kind of like, <laughs> and she's like, no, it really is. And we're like, no. She was like, we had a, we had a security guard that goes through the house at night. Some, he was walking through at midnight. Someone grabbed his shoulder, turned him around. No one was there. Part two, had a cleaning person come in at night. They were loading their stuff from outside, had a flip phone on their, on their belt. This was, you know, a little while ago and someone grabbed the phone guy turns around no one's there the camera went off freaking ghost took a selfie come on no joke was he in the was he in the photo no oh yeah yeah and it's it's the owner of the house like it's totally but like it's like a cold it's like one of those eerie most eerie photographs i've ever seen because it's literally a ghost like kind of like 
looking down at his cell phone like what what is this like like there's this odd cold curiosity about this device on this person's hip it's crazy dude so then we were like okay that's weird but whatever so we 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 went on with our first day of production and you know it's a short so we don't have trailers or anything so we left the wardrobe at the end of the day in the closet in the house sure right as yeah. you would like that's where we you know we left that's everything there that was our base and um the next day we come in and shoot and our lead actor's costume is missing no totally missing just just the guy's costume and we ended up looking for it for like 30 minutes and we found it under his desk in his house so being the director Are you sure like like <laughs> like the museum curator wasn't no, coming in they had no like, i got it we idea. even had we even had some of our guys because we had a lot of light equipment mm -hmm. that we couldn't fit inside we had guys camping out in the backyard like they're like we didn't go in we didn't see anybody else go in the security guard mm. was came through because it's a museum so they had the guy go through and he wasn't it, i mean it, this place is not the place anyone would you know muck around certainly muck, muck around oh my God. and so anyways i had to have a i had to have a talk with the ghost i was like hey his name's ralph I said ralph we love your house it's amazing it's a masterpiece and we want to make it look amazing we want to honor it we want to do something really great with it and uh I almost said we really want to make it come alive, but I thought that might be rude. You, you could be considered yeah. disrespectful. <laughs> you might want to be careful with that. You know, because I tend mean, to be depending on the temperament of the ghost. So anyways, that was a wild experience. Well, thank you so much for all that. That was really, yeah. really fun. Thank you. And terrifying with yes. the ghosts. You know what? I'll be sure to have the After that, respect. though, he, he didn't bother us. Well, he knew you were doing it right. Yeah. Thank you so much.